Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna definitely do something different this time. I'm gonna show you how to make a basic shape carved 3D fire truck. Now this is a very good place to start if you're wanting to do some sculpting, but you're not wanting to get into the very, very fine details. This kind of gives you the overall look and it's actually pretty impressive. And this is all buttercream with just fondant accents. What we started with was two 10 inch um, cakes and one eight inch square. Now this is the invitation, this is the inspiration. The inspiration for, that is the, um, the invitation and then they also sent us this image as an idea of what they wanted. They wanted it to be 3D but not too much cartoonish. So my challenge was to make it look like a carved 3D fire truck for this child's birthday, but at the same time, not making it too cartoony and more like the picture of the, the um, actually, was that the invitation or was it the plate? The decorations for the party. So what I did was I leveled them and then I'm cutting each one in half of the 10 inches, making sure that they are going to line up because I'm just gonna stack them one on top of the other. And to make sure that um, there's levelness to it. I do like to go ahead and make sure that when I stack them, I alternate. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. And I'm just cutting the 10 inch. I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember. No, that was the eight inch. Gosh, I can't remember. We're gonna say eight inch. <laughs> Cause we're gonna use that for the top. So I'm just laying them on my board and here's where I'm alternating them. And I'm just lining them up. There's no supports, there's no filling at this point. I like to go ahead and lay them down and then carve the shape before I do my simple syruping and before I do my filling. And here I'm just kind of make, carving off those uh, caramelized edges a little bit just to make it more of an even straight line. Now I'm gonna cover this with chocolate ganache so there is a little bit of leeway room but I think I find it's better off just to make sure that you're as even as you possibly can be before you even start to assemble your 3D cakes. And then I'm gonna carve an angle. I was kind of going for thirds, quarter to thirds. When you're imagining um, your proportions, I didn't want it to be necessarily half where the front part of the uh, fire truck ended. So I used my offcuts and I added some to the back and I angled the front just a little bit of an angle for the, um, the front of the truck, the window. And I'm, this is the cookies and cream flavor. And I'm just layering it up with a very thickened dam and some cookies and cream filling in between each layer. Now I don't wanna to do too thick of a filling since we are going to be having some weight on this cake and it's a sculpted cake. You don't wanna necessarily do too thick of a filling, but it's a basic squared shape uh, 3D cake, so it's a little safer. But I did under the, in between the, the tiers or the layers, I did put a board with some supports because I knew it was gonna sag in the middle there and I didn't want that. Now you might've seen that before and wondered what I was gonna do, but I knew I was gonna put that board there so that sagging would be gone. And then once I get it assembled, I put it in the refrigerator for a good 20 minutes or their freezer, if you ever in your freezer for 10 minutes, just to get that filling to set up before you do your first layer of ganache. And this is just two to one ratio, two parts chocolate to one part cream, mixed together, melted together, then let it cool. Um, so that's a little bit more of a spreadable consistency, more like peanut butter. Now I did this in two steps. I did a basic coat, put it in the freezer to firm up, and then I went back and I did another coat because this is gonna be buttercream, but I want it to um, be nice and crisp. I was kind of going more for a block truck, like a, a wood truck, like a wood toy kind of look. 
And this is another technique to get your depth of color with as little butter or little uh, food coloring as possible. Put it in your food processor. Now I've shown you how to use the microwave recently, but this is another way to do it where you don't have to worry about putting it into your refrigerator and firming up. So that's kind of nice too. There's a little bit more mess to clean up. It's just all the little parts that go with your food processor, but um, you get a more immediate result and all those air bubbles have been pushed out and I just transferred it to a piping bag and I'm just piping it on my chilled cake. I did put it back in the freezer again until I was ready for the buttercream. I'm just putting it on, making sure to pack in those edges and those corners. We have a lot of angles going on here. Um, and I find that it's easier to apply the buttercream with your, on your outline first, fill it in, and then smooth it because you have that buttercream packed in those corners, like I said. So you're not worried about, or you're not having that effect where you spread it on with your spatula and then you have nothing left in the corners. You pack it in there, half of your problem is solved already. Now this does take a while, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I have this waist dead up because this type of a cake takes some time. I think my overall footage was mm, about eight hours that I have of footage. So I'm definitely having to speed everything up here. This process of the buttercream, I did it in two stages again, chilling in between. It took me probably about mm, 45 minutes to an hour to get it where I wanted it. So make sure you're allowing yourself some time and don't be fooled by how fast this goes. It takes some time. Allow it, allow yourself that time. And also when you are doing buttercream on top of a chilled cake, when it sets up a little bit, I do find that it's a little easier to get your details because what you're doing is basically scraping away a firm foundation of buttercream. And that's a little easier than trying to get sharp corners off of a really soft, unchilled buttercream. So let your refrigerator and your freezer be your friend, especially with 3D cakes. Now, once I get this where I'm happy, I put it back in the refrigerator, not the freezer, because it was gonna take me some time to make the details. And I knew that. So in this case, your refrigerator is just fine. And earlier, I don't know if you saw me, I used a serrated knife to cut off the excess parts of the board. I find that's a little easier to do. Now we're gonna cover the board too. I wanted to do more of a concrete look as like in the picture. So I just rolled out some gray fondant. I used Color Mill Concrete, I believe is the name of this gray. And I just rolled it to about a quarter of an inch thick or thin, however you wanna say it added some shortening to the board, draped the fondant over it, and then I elevated it up on my on my stand and use a sharp edge to just remove that excess around the board. Just make sure your air bubbles are gone. And then I used three different techniques to get some texture. I used a grass tip to get some deeper indentations, more sporadically. Then I used this coarse brush. A wire brush, honestly, would be easier to do, but I did not have one, so I'm using a coarse um, pastry brush to really stipple in some more different types of depth. And then I, I uh, crinkled up some parchment paper and, and indented with that also. Then I just mixed my uh, concrete gray with some Everclear. Now the, um, the color mill colors for chocolate, the oil-based colors that I have, do not work generally well with being thinned down. They don't like it, it separates. But for this application, it was fine. So I just brushed it on and then I removed the excess so that it's just settled into the crevices and I used some more Everclear to make sure I got the extra off. Set that aside to dry. And now I, am, I find it's easier if I actually make a floor plan of the dimensions before I cut out my pieces. That way I know what size I need. So I'm not trying to, so I can cut them all out and then just apply them instead of trying to eyeball it and then misjudging the, the size and then having to recut. It's easier if I just have it all written down. That's just me. And then to get, for these doors that go up and down on the sides of the truck, they have some ribbing. So I just use my small ribbon cutter 
rolled it out, used my small ribbon cutter to uh, make an indentation. And then I just cut all the pieces that I had already pre-measured out what I needed. And then these are the pieces for the ladder. I added some tylos to these, to this fondant. And then I'm just using, I just cut them to the same width. I used my ruler there. I did it in half. And then I'm using a rectangular shaped cutter to do the rungs. This is super easy to do. And then I put it on, I put them on a piece of, you can eat some foam of some kind to dry. And it does not take that long, but I would, to be on the safe side, I'd do it overnight. And then those wheel um, molds that I have, I found those on Etsy. That's a great place to find things like that. You can make your own, but if you don't have the time and you have the patience or anything like that, then just go ahead. And Etsy's a great place to find some um, more specific, abstract kind of tools. I'll see if I can find the link, but I've, I've had those for a couple of years, but um, so I'm not sure if they're still there. Then I'm just making a whole bunch of different fun and decorations. And most of these I did not add tylos to, just the pieces that are going to um, need to be hold their shape. The tires I did and the ladder, like I said. And now I'm doing the, uh, what do you call them? The hubcap covers. I'm just using the same mold. I just cut a circle of the gray that's the same size as the hubcap part, add a little water to the fondant and then just apply those. And I'm gonna add some silver at the very end to all my silver accented pieces. Right now we're just starting off with gray. That's a good uh, rule of thumb. If you're gonna be doing silver, use gray as your undertone. I mean, you can do black too, but I find gray works better. It's like your base color. Like if you're doing a painting a wall red, you would paint it, you would tone it with uh, a pink first so that your red takes better. If you color your fondant gray, it's going to take the silver better. Now I just use another cutter to mark out where the wheels are going to go. Now remember, this is not a completely 3D realistic kind of cake. We're kind of going for in between here. Um, there's a little, a few little, little ways to create that look. And by cutting in for the wheels, that is one way. And I just applied those with buttercream. And I did do rims around the outside edge. I didn't get the footage of that. I just cut out a circle with a smaller circle in between, in the middle, and just lined the, the section that I had cut out with that. And I did a piece of fondant underneath the wheel to make sure that you're not seeing the cake behind the wheel. And then another way right here too, with that black strip around the bottom that kind of gives you the illusion that there's nothing underneath it. We're going for illusion here. I've done 3D trucks and things like that in the past where I actually elevated them and did a block underneath. It was smaller than the actual cake on top, but that was not the budget for this cake. So we're going for the overall effect. And then I'm just attaching everything with shortening besides the, the ladder on top. I did use piping gel for that. You can do butter or butter, water if you want to. Um, but I find shortening for me works just fine. Heavier pieces, you're going to want to use buttercream behind like the wheels and maybe even your, um, what do you call them? The, um, the hoses, you use a little buttercream behind those. And now I am painting the silver. It's just silver luster dust with Everclear. You can use rejuvenating spirits. You can use, um, lemon extract. That works fine too. And I did not show you how I made, I, there are so many details, guys, I couldn't show you everything. But the letters, I just, in the number, I just used cutters and cut them out and then laid them on a piece of black and traced out around them and just to attach those to the board. So there's the whole thing, guys. I hope you liked it. This is something different. Let me know if you want to see more like this and we'll catch you next time.